Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Tarek El Tawil, and I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons at the National Institute of Neuromotor System in Cairo. My talk today will be on total hip replacement on top of vestibular dysplasia, bit falls, and tricks. This is a 32 year old uh, man who uh, presented to us with a painful right hip stiff uh, and short and uh, actually he denotes that he had uh, his problem uh, since he was quite young and if we um, have a quick look at the x-ray we uh, may discover that this is uh, a stabular dysplasia and that the hip center is quite high and if you take the two lesser trochanters you'll find quite um, uh, quite a difference, maybe uh, four or five centimeters proximal migration of the uh, femur on the right side. And uh, this is to show you the uh, true size of the uh, head, which is definitely subluxing laterally and making uh, leaving a very shallow, high acetabulum. And uh, this uh, these are some measurements to show you the uh, shortening of the uh, femur or the proximal migration and maybe uh, four or five centimeters here and if you take the hip center on this side uh, in comparison to the um, other side maybe another uh, two or three centimeters and um, this is the uh, lateral frog view and to square the pelvis we just rotate the uh, image like this so you can make a better judgment and now again uh, quite obvious you, though you have some good bone stock on the median side yet the acetabulum is uh, quite uh, small uh, shallow and uh, high up the drawings is just to show, how, uh, to show how high the acetabulum is. And now, if you plan to do a total hip replacement, you, uh, before you operate, you should not be uh, deceived by the uh, acetabulum that you have right here because uh, this is not um, in an anatomic position. It's a high center uh, hip, shallow acetabulum and high. And uh, actually, if you are inserting a, a cementless uh, a cup, uh, ideally it should be here just to be uh, in line with the uh, opposite hip. But uh, actually there is uh, not enough bone in the acetabulum to have good cover for the weight bearing area of the uh, acetabular component. And this, if you keep a, a, a cup like this, uh, definitely it will uh, fail quite soon as um, there is no much fixation for it and then you may um, bring it slightly up like this so uh, there will be no much problem with a high uh, center hip and uh, by uh, doing this you may have some uh, good cover uh, the mistake is if you go like this and you ream into the acetabulum, taking the outer border of the acetabulum as your uh, landmark in reaming. In this situation, you will make a very high uh, center for your hip. Uh, some measurements again, uh, there is obviously from this x-ray and on clinical examination of the patient, there is a quite limited abduction and um, as I mentioned some other cases before, uh, usually I do uh, percutaneous adductor tenotomy for these uh, patients to facilitate uh, bringing the uh, femur down, especially on uh, reducing the hip after you finish the uh, cup and the uh, stem. And um, again, we may have to uh, release some muscles as I'm going to show you uh, right now. Uh, these are the adductors and uh, 
you see that the uh, uh, the nerve goes in front of the uh, abductors, not far away from the uh, place where you have to operate. So uh, my advice, actually, if you are doing percutaneous um, adductor tenotomy, you should uh, keep your knife as close uh, to the bone and don't go so uh, deep. And uh, Trying to bring the femur down, actually, you have the insertion of the gluteus medius and minimus at the uh, greater uh, trochanter, and you can release uh, the anterior one-third half or even more than that. This actually facilitates very much bringing the uh, femur or pulling the femur down. And again, for the uh, iliopsoas muscle, which definitely will be uh, uh, in contracture, you may have to release uh, most of the uh, insertion of the muscle uh, at the uh, lesser trochanter, or you uh, might have to release it completely, detach it from the uh, lesser trochanter. Now, this is the uh, operation uh, which was done, and uh, you can notice that we didn't go uh, far medial into the joint so as not to uh, penetrate the medial uh, cortex, we definitely couldn't uh, bring it down to anatomic position as we don't have enough uh, bone stock here to cover the uh, acetabular component, especially at the weight bearing area. And uh, again, we didn't, if you look at this triangle here between the original acetabulum and between the cup and this denotes that we, we didn't trim, uh, uh, we didn't widen the acetabulum uh, up to the its outer uh, circumference, which is uh, here. And uh, uh, I believe this is an uh, acceptable uh, position uh, right now of the processes in general. And this is a wider uh, view. And these are uh, some measurements to show you uh, that we uh, succeeded to bring maybe two and a half or three centimeters of the femur down. And um, the hip center is not uh, very high from the uh, other side. This is a lateral view. And this is uh, X-rays uh, pre and post almost of the same uh, size and uh, position if you like to uh, uh, make a comparison between the two things. So uh, to sum up with a stabular dysplasia where you have a shortening a shallow astabulum, a high hip center, uh, you have to uh, think of trying to uh, make your acetabular reaming uh, just uh, in a better uh, uh, anatomic position, bring it down and try to have good cover for the uh, weight bearing area of the component that you are going to insert. And uh, regarding the shortening of the femur, you have to do a proper release of the um, muscles controlling uh, the hip here, mainly the abductors, the iliopsoas, and the adductors. Thank you very much for watching.